Hello, friends, and welcome again to Profit from Prophets, where prophecy speaks and prosperity follows. No, I'm not a prophet, nor am I the son of a prophet, but I believe in the prophets. As the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Before we get into today's lesson, let's pray. Dear Father, bless the reading of your word today, bless its study, so that people might understand the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll be continuing with the rapture, part two today, going off from what we learned last week. And this week, we are answering the question, does Jesus return without warning? So last week, we looked at a few things with regards to the pre-tribulation rapture, or what some call the secret rapture. And this week, we're going to ask, ask, answer the question, does Christ return without warning? So just to recap from what we did last week, pre-tribulation rapture, necessary presuppositions, all right? These are ideas that have to be true in order for the secret rapture or the pre-tribulation rapture to be correct. These are claims. It's not what the Bible says, but this is what they claim, all right? So the first one was separation. The claim that the rapture and the second coming are two different events. We've dealt with that in the previous lesson. If you'd missed that, go back to that and go over it again. Or go over, yeah, go over it again if, you, if you're still unclear. But we dealt with that. There is no separation, all right? The rapture and the second coming are one event. That is what we found out. It is one event. And that the rapture is not secret either. It is very open. It is, everyone will see it. When Jesus comes in the clouds, everyone sees it. So today we're going to be dealing with imminence, the claim that Christ can return at any moment without signs or warnings. Number three, which is escapism, we'll be dealing in the next presentation. Okay? So the Bible teaches, just as a recap again, that the second coming is one event, and that happens when Jesus returns in the clouds. Okay? So when Christ comes again, it will he will come in the clouds, in the sky, every eye will see him. It will be like lightning. With the trump of God, the dead will be raised. Now, this is not something you can miss. This is not a secret. This is not Christ coming in the desert or coming in the secret place. Remember, Jesus does not come unannounced. Jesus always returns announced. He does not return unannounced. That's what the Bible said. That's what we found out in the previous lesson. So, if there's no separation, the idea that this rapture and the second coming are two separate events, then there can be no imminence. For if the first premise fails, the second one will also fail and all the ones following. Because the, all these other ones are based on the idea of separation. So those who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture acknowledge that there are signs indicating the second coming. Right? Therefore, as we have shown that the Bible teaches that the second coming is one event, not two separate events, this necessarily disproves the claims of imminence that Jesus can come at any time without warning or signs preceding. What did Jesus say precedes his return? Okay, what did Christ say? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall be when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they asked for two things, the sign of Christ's return, the second coming, and the end of the world. Well, they're not asking, when are you going to come secretly? They're asking, when are you going to come again? So they understood, they understood that he would be leaving and returning. They understood that he would be leaving and returning. So they asked, what are the signs of your return? So right then and there, it indicates that the disciples understood that there would be signs that would follow Christ or before he came, and so he would not return without warning. Jesus does not return without warning. All right? Let's take a look at some other things that uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24, just in the way of quick summation, you can go ahead and read the chapter, Matthew 24, uh, also Revelation chapter 13, 
things that are supposed to precede the second coming of Christ. Revelation chapter 14 as well. All right. So false Christ appearing openly and in secret, wars, rumors of wars, ethnic violence, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, persecution, falling away. There's supposed to be a falling away first. False prophets, so the spread of evil. Love is going to grow cold. The sun will be darkened. The moon will be darkened. The stars will fall. The mark of the beast will appear. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Then you have the second coming. All these things happen before the second coming. Jesus does not leave us unwarned. He warns us that things will happen before he returns. Does the Bible say that Christ can come at any time? And the answer is clearly no. It clearly says he cannot come at any time. Peter, speaking of Jesus, said, Whom the heaven must receive. So, remember, who received heaven? Jesus was received up into the clouds, up into heaven. So he's talking about Jesus, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So Jesus, who was taken up into heaven, whom heaven received, he will stay there until the times of restitution of all things. This disproves the claims of separation and imminence for Christ will not come secretly or suddenly until this time of restitution of all things. So does the Bible say that Christ can come at any time? No, the Bible does not say any such thing. So what was lost that needs restitution? Now the restitution is to restore. Okay. It's to restore something lost, broken, uh, left behind, you know, something. It's to restore something. So what are the times of restitution? What was lost that needs restitution? Well, I think you can have, you can hazard a good guess. What is lost in the world but God's law? Wickedness abounds, evil abounds, lying, murder, theft, perversion, all kinds of things. God's law, God's law is what needs to be restored. It's God's law. It is the operation of truth and righteousness in the universe. And in this one spot, this one little spot, is the only place where rebellion and evil is found. And rebellion and evil is what? It's a sin. And what is sin but the breaking of the commandments of God? And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. And we ask, well, what is this? People are going to be restoring things. God's people are going to be raising up the foundations of many generations. They shall build the old waste places, things that have been destroyed, that need to be restored, because we will be called. This is talking to God's people. It's a prophecy of God's people. Restorers of the paths to dwell in. And what does it say? It says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. Yes, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt thou honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Isaiah 58, 12-13. This is what needs to be restored. God's law is what needs to be restored. Go back and take a look at my mark of the beast. We know what the mark of the beast is. Sunday rest by law. We know that, in general, Sunday is seen as, as God's holy day, when it is not. It's a lie. And what needs to be restored is God's holy law. That is what needs to be restored. And Christ will not return until God's law is restored in God's people. The Antichrist versus God's law. Remember what the Antichrist does. He attacks God's law. Again, Daniel 7.25, I won't read the whole part, but it says, and think to change times and laws. The papacy has inculcated in society, has spread in society, Protestantism has not divested itself from it, the Sunday sacredness. Protestantism is breaking God's law. Then said these men, 
we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. These men were inspired by the devil to persecute Daniel. That's right. And they were going to do it on what? Against the law of his God. Against the law of his God. It's always against God's law. Satan hates God's law. God's law indicates that Christ is king. You uh, Christians out there who keep saying Christ is king. Well, if he's king, why are you following the law of the Pope and not following the law of Christ? God's going to hold you to your words. You keep saying Christ is king and worshiping on Sunday, claiming that to do otherwise is to Judaize. Well, let me tell you something. Salvation is of the Jews. That's what the Bible says. Jesus talked to the Samaritan woman, and he told the Samaritan woman that salvation of the Jews, he said, you don't know what you worship, but we know what we worship. Who were the Samaritans? People who had both pagan and Jewish practice, just like Sunday keepers, who have both pagan and Jewish practice. You don't know what you worship if you're worshiping on Sunday. The Lord God is plain. His Sabbath is the seventh day. Check out my uh, seventh day Sabbath videos. It'll tell you the truth. If you want to be saved, you have to be a spiritual Jew. We're going to get into that in a, in a few next lessons here. That's right. If you want to be saved, you have to be a spiritual Jew. Salvation is of the Jews, not of the ethnic Jews, but the spiritual Jews. Yes, that's what the Bible says. And it is Satan is always attacking God's law. God's law is the thing that has been made void and what needs to be restored. God is calling his people to restore the broken law. Here you have the symbol of Protestantism, it's the Anglicans, and the papacy, all coming together, all one. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. That's right. Catholicism and apostate Protestantism have made void God's seventh-day Sabbath law before the world. The last sign before the second coming is the restitution of God's law among his true people. That's one of the last signs. The restitution, the times of restitution of all things, is the restitution of God's law among his people, among his true people. There's lots of people claim Jesus, but they don't listen to Jesus. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. The last test upon the earth is the mark of the beast crisis. And here, Revelation 14, 12, which follows after the description of the curses of God upon those who accept the mark of the beast, this is in juxtaposition, that is, those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus are in opposition to those who keep the mark of the beast. So the mark of the beast has to do something with God's law, and it is the Sabbath law. That is what has to be restored. And Jesus will not return. He cannot come back. He will not come back until the time of restitution of all things. Jesus will not return until the Sabbath law is restored amongst his people. I'm not talking about in the world. I'm not talking about the whole world being converted to the Sabbath. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that amongst God's people, his true people, true Sabbath worship will be restored. And everyone on earth will have to make a choice. Either the Sunday rest by law mark of the beast or the seal of God, seventh day Sabbath. That is the choice. So what does the Bible say? When does Jesus come quickly? The development of a perfect moral character, a perfect faith in Jesus amongst God's people leads to the final proclamation in heaven. Because in the Bible, in Revelation, there is a final proclamation. And it says this, in this Revelation 22, 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Then it says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Jesus will not return until the time of restitution of all things. When Jesus Christ, when his character is in God's people, as it's supposed to be, when we have the faith of Jesus and keep his commandments, then and only then 
that proclamation is made in heaven and there is no more movement. That is, all decisions have been made final. We're going to deal with this in more detail in a later presentation. But this is what the Bible says. There is a time when everyone has made a final decision. And then, and only then, will Jesus return quickly. People who believe in the secret rapture use verse 12 here out of context. First comes the end of probation, what we call probation. Then restitution of God's character in man. Then Jesus comes quickly and not before. That's right. When probation closes, this is the final call. All, all the world has made a decision, either for or against Christ. Those who believe God keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. They have, there's a restitution of God's character in man. That signals the close of probation. Everyone has made a choice. Then Jesus will come quickly. Then Jesus will come quickly. So it's after probation's close that Christ will come quickly. What about Jesus saying that he comes as a thief? Right? People say, well, Jesus comes as a thief. Is that not secretly and silently? Right? A thief is like this. He sneaks around, very quiet, very sneaky. You don't hear him. You don't see him. What does the Bible say? Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. All right. So what kind of a thief is this? It says, blessed he that watcheth. Now, you shouldn't be able to see this thief. Remember, he's a sneaky thief. But Jesus says, blessed is he that watches. So this is not, we're getting the hint here. This is not about silent or, or secret. It's something that you can watch to avoid. In 2 Peter 3.10, it says this, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Is that silent to you? Does that sound silent? doesn't sound silent to me. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound very silent. If there's a big explosion and lots of fire, I think that would wake you up. That doesn't sound very silent to me. But let's keep going. What else does the Bible say? What kind of thief is Jesus? Now, I know we know that Jesus is no thief, but he says he comes as a thief in the night. So what kind of in-the-night thief is Jesus? Is he a sneaky, silent thief, or is he a sudden, noisy thief? What does the Bible say? Luke 12, 37 to 40. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Okay, so this is something you can watch for. You're not going to be caught unaware if you're watching. All right. This thief won't get won't be able to sneak past you if you're watching. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in a third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. So the servants are supposed to watch. And he might come in the second watch or he might come in the third watch. He might come he might come later than you thought. He might come earlier than you thought. And know this and and this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be you therefore ready, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. So the idea here is the suddenness of it, not the sneakiness of it. It's the suddenness. And notice what he says, his house to be broken through. Now what is he talking about? Not broken in, broken through. What kind of thief is Jesus? What was the point of watching if there's no way to tell when Christ comes? The first century Jewish home, this is about bro broken through. The first century Jewish home is made of mud brick and could be broken into. When a first century thief comes, you know when he's there because he's breaking through your house. He's digging through your wall. It's the suddenness of the attack that Jesus warns against, not a silent or secret event. So Jesus is not a sneaky thief. He's a sudden thief, but he makes a lot of noise when he gets there. But there are signs to watch before he gets there. Jesus does not leave us without warning. Remember, that's the point. Does Jesus come without warning? 
Those who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture believe in imminence, that Jesus can come without warning. The Bible says, no, Jesus comes with warning. With warning. So, let's ask this question. Who's left behind? Okay, we get to this text now, finally, where people use, who is left behind? Matthew 24, 40 to 42, people quote this text often in relation to a pre-tribulation type of secret rapture. All right? Then two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other one left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. There it is. There's two at the mill, shoop, suddenly there goes one. There's two in the field, shoop, suddenly there goes another. One is left thinking, well, where did my friend go? No, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. This is misquoting Christ. Because context is the key. Context is the key. What does the Bible say? The context of this passage is Matthew 24, in which Jesus speaks about open, visible signs that his coming is near. It has nothing to do with secrets. Matthew 24 has nothing to do with secrets. There is no secret, unannounced, silent coming of Jesus. That is not how it works. Matthew 24 is very plain. Remember, we went over the list of signs that Jesus talks about. A lot of those are found in Matthew 24, and none of those things are can be ignored. They're going to be seen and experienced by very many people. So the context of the previous text that we were reading is not secretness. It's suddenness. Now, specifically with this one, what is Jesus saying? Two are grinding at the mill. Two are in the field. What does that mean? Well, let's see. What is the context, again, of those verses? Let's keep reading. But as the days of Noah were. Ah, okay. So already Jesus is giving us a context for these verses. Okay. As the days of Noah were. So let's think about flood. So as also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, what does he mean? For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So what was going on? They're eating, they're drinking, they're giving a marriage. What was going on? They're, they're at the mill, you know, shh, doing their thing at the mill. They're in the field. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay. Question. So who's left behind in the flood? Who was left behind in the flood? It was Noah. You see, this is what the Bible says. Those who believe in the secret rapture have twisted the words of Christ. For they say that those taken at the mill or in the field are taken by Christ to heaven, which is not what the Bible says. But here Jesus plainly says that when the flood came, it took away the wicked and left behind the righteous. Noah and his family survived. They were the ones left behind, the righteous. This text does not prove a secret rapture. It only says that there will be two classes of people at the end. The wicked taken by the flood and the righteous are left behind alive. So those who believe in this, these left behind movies, where if you're left behind, you're wicked and you have a second chance. No, it's not what the Bible says. There is no second chance. Your chance is right now while you're alive. Because when Jesus comes, it's over. When Jesus comes, everyone has already made their decision. The unjust will be unjust, and the righteous will be righteous. There is no movement. There is no change in camp. All this has to be decided right now. Right now is your decision. Imminence, the claim that Christ can return at any moment without signs and warnings, is false. It's absolutely false. The Bible says, watch. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch you, therefore, 
for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, and what I say unto you I say unto all, watch. Jesus is telling us to watch. What are we supposed to watch? The signs. Watch the signs. Compare what is going on in the world with Scripture. That's what we're supposed to do. Pestilence, earthquake. You can read about these things. They're happening. Ethnic violence. Oh, this is a big one. People are saying, well, these are things that have always happened. No, they haven't. As these things come together, as these things come together and they will form a world mentality that will accept the mark of the beast, this has never happened before. Never. We've already experienced something close to the mark of the beast, the spirit of the mark of the beast. You can learn about that in my Sunday Law update sermon. We've experienced the spirit of the mark of the beast, not the mark of the beast itself. The mark of the beast is Sunday rest by law. But the spirit of coercion, where the whole world is made to do one thing. That's right. The whole world is made to do one thing, except one thing that will save the world. And if you don't accept this thing, people got fired. People lost their jobs. You could not buy or sell almost because you don't have any money because you just lost your job because you wouldn't take the one thing. We're close, friends. We're very close. And uh, Jesus is coming. And watch. Watch you, therefore. Does Jesus come without warning? He comes with warning, with plenty of warning. And that's why those who refuse the warnings that are being given will have no excuse when he returns or in the judgment. All right, friends, thank you for spending time with us today. I pray the Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide you during the week and bless you. And remember what the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. The next lesson is going to cover number three, escapism. We're going to cover number three, escapism, the idea that the Christian church will not face tribulation or the Antichrist. Is that true? Well, you'll want to stay tuned to the next lesson to find out. God bless. Take care. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this time we could spend together. I pray the Holy Spirit continue to lead people to a deeper understanding of your truth and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.